When we started our businesses, we thought that because we were great plumbers, that would translate into being great business owners. But that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, successfully operating a home service business has very little to do with the trades. Hey guys, I'm Tony Wally. And I'm Matt Baldwin, and this is The Coach's Corner, a podcast dedicated to helping you create a thriving business and stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Welcome to the show. Welcome in, everybody. This is a little bit different episode. For the first time, I'll be going solo with you today, and Matt and Ashley are on a well-deserved vacation. Um, them and their their family have have taken a little vacation, and uh, it's well deserved. They they got they have busy lives, and anytime a vacation is on the on the menu, I I, I like to hear that. So. I'll be welcoming Matt back next time. And for this time, it'll just be me and you. So, you know, I had a customer conversation and and I, w- I just want to jump right into to what I want to talk to you about. I, I had a customer conversation that this happened a while back, but it's pertinent to, to what I want to talk to you about. We, we had a call one time and I just happened to take the call and a customer was upset about the price that they paid for the job. And it was after the fact. But they were still upset. And they, they were upset, come to find out, at the amount of time that it took for us to get the job done. And even though we got approval before we started the job and we um, offered options and let the customer know what we would be doing. We had a misunderstanding because the customer thought that because they paid a certain price that the job should take a certain amount of time. And it was a good conversation for, for me to have because otherwise I would have never known how the, the customer felt and it started off as a customer complaint, but it ended up a really good conversation. And I think we both came away with a better understanding of how we feel as a company and, and as well as how the customer feels. It's important to see things through the through the customer's eyes so you'll know how to make corrections and how to explain yourself. Uh, but this customer in particular... Uh, we were going to, we were doing a job and we explained what was going to go on. And because, like I said, because we didn't take as long as what the customer thought, the customer began to kind of re reverse engineer the whole process and come up with a number, uh, a dollar amount that we were charging per hour. And it, it made, it made her mad quite frankly. And so she, I'm thankful that she called and and said that she was upset. And we both got an opportunity to explain, like I said, how we felt, but in our conversation, I think that she revealed that if we would have just got a little bit dirtier, a little bit sweatier, took a little bit longer if it would have seemed like the job was a little bit harder than it, what it was that the amount of money that she paid would have been more justified. And that was really revealing for me because what I heard was, I just don't value your time enough to pay you this amount of money. And as I explained to her, you know, you're not paying for a certain time amount that we're there. We, we, I should back up and say that we are a flat rate company and we have a flat rate task for everything that we do. And there are a lot of things that are factored into that. Um, but we are intentional about being prepared for every job, having as much, material on our vehicles as possible so we can get the job done. And our goal is to get done as efficiently as possible. So you as the customer can get back to your day 
because we know you didn't want to call us. We know you are in an uncomfortable situation and we know you just had other things planned beside calling the plumber. So that's our angle. And then it was interesting to to hear that the customer, even though they they did want us out of there and they wanted the job done, it just seemed as though it would have been more justifiable, the dollar amount, I mean, if we would have just maybe maybe taken longer. And it just didn't seem like it was a big a, as big a job as what they paid for in their eyes. So they were expect the customer was expecting us to to take longer because of the the dollar amount and so in the in the process of this conversation I, I asked her I said do you if we would have taken longer would it have would it have been more justifiable and she said yes and that that was that was a a turning point in the conversation where we both started to understand each other. Uh, We're trying to get out of there faster. And because of our experience and the fact that we've done this job in particular, whatever job uh, you're doing, if you've done it over and over and over and you have the experience to have the forethought of what might happen. So you have the things on your, your van ready and you uh, take the proper steps to make that job go as quickly as possible. That's our goal, you know, and that's what we would say is a successful job, not necessarily uh, dragging the job out because you're getting paid by the hour and you want it to seem like it's a harder job. You want to get done and, make the customer happy because we know that from years of experience that this is not something that the customer wants a plumber in their house all day long. But yet again, when they let go of their hard earned money, they want to know that you worked for it. I think that that's, that's a really, that in that conversation, we had a good understanding and we saw each other's perspectives that, you know, if I'm going to let go of this hard earned money, I just want you to know that I just want to know that you worked for it, you know, and that can manifest itself in, in a few different ways. And, and, and in this particular situation, if it would have just seemed like it was a harder job for you to finish, I would have felt better about the amount of money that I spent. And so the time money value exchange was, it was lopsided and, and she was upset about that. So it it leads me to kind of go, start going over some things that we need to make sure that we do when we're interacting with our customers to add value to the job because it is their hard earned money and they do want to know that they got a good value. So it's hard not to feel like you spent more money than you should have when the job goes super fast, because in our industry, there's a stigma there, but because, you know, a lot of service companies charge by the hour and you kind of know what you're paying. So you're kind of, that, but that does force you to kind of look at the, look at your watch the whole time and make sure that they stop the clock if they have to go off the job or that, that just creates a whole, um, a whole pressure that we don't need. And you can avoid that by, by charging a flat rate task and getting approved for the job before you start it. So, so you're both well aware of what the the price is going to be, whether it takes 30 minutes or six hours, at least you know what the price is going to be and the price doesn't change. So that in itself is, is a plus, but when you get finished with a job way earlier than the, than the customer expects, that is what led to this problem. But just things in general that we can do to add value to our customers is create a system that you do every time as a technician, as a company that handles a service call, you have to be prepared every step of the way. And there are some bullet points that that we've come up with in MDP. We call it the sales service process 
and you can call it sales, you can call it service. We are serving the customer and and they are calling to buy our services. So whatever makes you feel more confident, um, it's important to, from start to finish, like I said, have a process that you do and that you practice so that the customer feels safe and secure with what you're telling them. Hey, plumbing pro, you wouldn't plumb a house without a blueprint. So why are you trying to build your plumbing business without one? Grab your free copy of my Million Dollar Plumber Blueprint. In it, I lay out the exact specs on how to build a successful, self-sustaining, and very profitable plumbing business. Don't risk years of waste of time and money and failure. Grab your Million Dollar Plumber Blueprint now, and it's free. My gift to you for simply being a Coach's Corner follower. Go to themilliondollarplumber.com forward slash free and plumb like a champion. I try to think of some examples and of one of the examples that came to mind was anytime we fly somewhere, there's a process that they go through. Like when you get in and you sit down, they go over all of the safety regulations and, and pretty much every airline is almost to the, to the word verbatim, what they say, you know, you, this is what we do. This is how you put your seatbelt on. This is how you, you, this is what happens in the event of a water landing. This is what happens in the event we lose cabin pressure on and on and on. So I've heard it so many times. It's not anything out of the ordinary. Um, so that's just one example, but as it relates to the plumbing service call, right out of the gate and we'll 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 for the for the purposes of this episode we'll already assume that the call has been booked by the CSR and you as a technician are receiving that call you want to have a process each time and this is what we do so when you get that job you're going to view it and kind of research back on your on your tablet i'm assuming that 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 we have a C, CRM we use service titan but you you know field pulse whichever one you use, you're, you're, you should have it a job history in the database. And so when we first get jobs, our technicians view the job and research anything that has been done prior to when that technician gets there. And it prepares them for the, for the icebreaker call, which comes next that they're going to make. Um, and there'll be, informed on the customer's name and the whereabouts and what's been done in their house through previous invoices. And the next thing that comes along is the icebreaker call. And that's a very important thing to do the same way every single time you call. And that's just a call to in, introduce yourself to the customer, inform them of what is fixing to happen and give them some kind of idea of what's going on and get off the phone. That's important too. So in our icebreaker calls, it sounds a little bit like this. Um, hello, Ms. Jones. This is Tony with Wally Plumbing. Just wanted to let you know that I'll be the technician headed out to your house today. It looks like you've got a water heater problem. Is that right? And the customer will uh, elaborate a little bit and just show some empathy uh, by way of saying, oh, I hate to hear that. I know that it's frustrating when you, you're looking for hot water and you just don't have any, but I'm going to be on my way out there and I'll be there in 12 to 15 minutes. It's important to give them an ETA and be accurate on that ETA. And I'm going to put you some options together to get this taken care of today. Is that okay? And then the customer says, yeah, and then get off the phone. Um, it's important to get off the phone because a lot of times customers will try to get into troubleshooting and they're nervous about what the problem might be and they want to talk about that. And that's just normal. You know, so it's important to guide the conversation and be the expert and let them know that you're going to figure it out when you get there and you don't want to get into any pricing over the phone. And then when you get to the job, it's important how you arrive. You know, if the customer has any kind of idea what time you're going to be there, which they do, or your your software allows them to track you, they're looking for you. So when you pull up, they're probably going to be looking out the window. So you want to be mindful of that. Uh, you don't want to be talking on the phone. You don't want to be doing anything that makes you look distracted. And you also want to pull up in the street. If it's in a neighborhood and the house isn't off by itself, you want to pull up in the street. Uh, 
a lot of times in the past we've pulled up in uh, driveways and maybe you leak oil on their driveway that leaves, you know, a bad, a bad mark on you and your company. So not only that, but also there've been so many times over the years we pull up in the driveway and then some time throughout the service call, the customer or somebody in the customer's house needs to leave for something. So they have to go through the uncomfortability of asking you to stop what you're doing and come out and move your van and you have to get up and stop what you're doing. And it's just, a, it's just all that can be avoided if you just park in the street. And when you're walking up to the house, you want to make sure that you don't walk through their grass. And again, these things, they seem to me that they go without saying, but a lot of, a lot of people and a lot of technicians are hearing this for the first time. So I hope, I hope this helps. Um, if the customers have walkways, use the walkways. Don't don't walk in the grass because some customers are more particular about their lawn. And it's important that you show respect and show um, you know, I guess respect is the right word, respect for their property. Um, it it may not be a big deal to some customers, but if you do it over and over the same way every time there are those customers that will appreciate that. So like I said, walk up the driveway and use the the sidewalks that are provided. Uh, and don't be on, like I said, don't be on the phone and don't be uh, doing anything that would make you look any other way than that you're focused on, on the job, focused on the customer's house that you're currently at. And when you walk up to the door it's important that you take your sunglasses off if you're wearing them. Like people that can't see your eyes, that's a red flag. Subliminally, that's a red flag because they don't, they can't tell what's going on. You can tell a lot about somebody and people can make you feel a certain way if you can just see their eyes. But if you have sunglasses on, it takes that opportunity away. So that's a big deal. So when you're walking up to the, to the customer's house, be sure to take your sunglasses off and knocking on the door even the number of times you knock on the door is super important we want to knock on the door four times and it, it's just a data shows that that's a an appropriate number of times to knock on somebody's door three times might not be enough and five times is is too aggressive so four times uh, and all these things are well thought out and they're building credibility uh in the customer's mind about you and when you knock on the door step away, give, give your customer some room to answer the door and to not feel threatened with you all up in the, um, in their personal space, you know, six feet away is a, is a good kind of rule of thumb to just kind of knock on the door and step back so they can see who it is at the door before they open it. And that helps. And when they open the door and introduce yourself again, maybe hand them a business card and the conversation will most likely the customer will either invite you in or start walking towards where the plumbing problem is. And it's, it's important for you to ask if you can, if you can come in to the house, don't just assume that because they're walking away, you can follow them. Just it's, it makes a big difference in people's mind. If you ask this Jones, is it okay if I come in? And be sure to put shoe covers on before you go in. Uh, a lot of customers will say, don't worry about shoe covers. I'm not worried about that. But stay systematic. And, you know, even if you have to say something like, oh, you know, I've, I've, I've been to several jobs today. And it's important for me to make sure that I don't track anything in your house that that you don't want in there. or Anything to make it. To, you, you're going to put shoe covers on regardless. So. Um, and once you walk into the to the house and head to the plumbing problem let them know what you're going to do hey i'm gonna I, I see that your water heat we'll say we'll say for a water heater for instance i see your water heater uh is leaking at the bottom i'm going to take a look at it and i'm going to put some estimates together for you so you'll have some options so we can get that taken care of today is that okay with you miss jones so you're communicating 
what you're going to do so they know. Because remember, this may be the first time that they've had a plumber in the house or it may not be, but I, for sure it's not the most comfortable of situations for the customer. Even though you may do it time and time and time again, day after day, each customer is unique and we need to be empathetic about how we're acting and, and treat it like it's the first time that, th that you've been in their house and be mindful and, and intentional on making them comfortable in every way. So when you, when you inform the customer that you're going to go create some estimates and some options, let them know I'll, I'm going to step out and, and make these options and then I'll come back in and explain and when you do come back in and and start to explain what you found, it's important that you reveal to them what you recommend because you're the expert in the situation and um, they're looking for advice. That's why they called us out here and they're looking for options. You know, we live in a world where everything we buy pretty much has options. They have a good, better and a best options. Uh, a flat screen TV is a perfect example when you go to the store to look for a TV, there's they don't just have one TV to choose from. You've got, you know, a big TV, a small TV, a curved TV, all kind of different options. And it's like that for, for most things that we, we buy. So, and it's also good for price perspective. So when you when you introduce a price to a customer, if it's the only price that they hear, it's going to sound bad. It's going to sound too expensive. But if you offer a good, a better, and a best option, even if the, let's see, if we were doing a, a toilet, the toilet won't quit running. So a good estimate could be we're going to replace your fill valve and the supply line, or we could, since everything is, is probably the same age, Ms. Jones, it would be a good idea. And what I recommend is we go ahead and do a complete tank rebuild because everything will be the same age. I won't have to come back and fix anything in a couple of months when it goes bad. Um, and I'm not sure if you're interested or not, but I could also just replace the whole toilet and I could uh, provide you with a comfort height toilet. It sits a little bit higher and it's a lot of our customers like those because they're more comfortable. Just offering those options is allowing the customer to choose and they want to say no. Remember, I, I haven't met a customer yet that got up and said, Hey, I'm so excited. I get to call the plumbing company about this problem that I have. It's just not something that's, that's a reality. And um, so making the situation more comfortable and giving the customer options um, is going to give them a sense of control, you know, and that's what, that's what we all want as customers. So, and and also too, it's a good time at the, at this point when you when you introduce the options to tell them about your membership plan, and, and a way that they can get a discount by being a member, and that's a whole nother episode. I think I think that it's I, I don't want to go into a whole spill about memberships in this episode. It's just important that you have one and you offer it and you recommend it and you know if you need help with that, we can do another episode about what we include in our memberships, but they are super important and they, they are valuable. Um, and also too, it's important to point out, uh, that you have promotional payment options if they're interested in seeing if they qualify. Financing is important. Let's face it. Home service companies are a dime a dozen and Mrs. Jones has many to choose from. Now it may not be PC, but she does judge a book by its cover. That's why there's kick charge the industry's leading and most awarded branding and truck wrap design agency who has been instrumental in getting home service providers noticed for over 20 years. And right now, Kick Charge is offering a $500 rebate to all Coaches Corners listeners. To get more information, go to milliondollarpro.com forward slash kick charge and start getting noticed today. And if you're not offering financing, it's a great tool that can help your customer uh, spend somebody else's money other than theirs because again nobody wants to have to spend money and if they have options to to make smaller payments in order to to prolong that or or not you want to at least give them that option financing if you're not offering it you need to be offering it i just that's that's really not um something that i would move forward in business without 
having that capability to offer customers because it's just the way business is done in a lot of circumstances these days. <laughs> and so for, for this, for this episode, we're going to just say that the customer agrees to what you're recommending and you, and you move forward uh, that we can create another episode too. Like I said, when the customer has pushback and the customer has questions on the price and, and on all the things that, that come along with explaining an estimate. And we'll do that. We'll, we'll get into some, some situations where uh, the customer's not happy with the price and we can, we can work through that on another episode. But for the purposes of this episode, we'll just say the customer has agreed to your price. So you want to move forward with the work, but before you do that, you want to make sure that you protect their countertops by putting tool mats down if that's appropriate and putting drop cloths down if that's appropriate for drain cleaning or any such thing like that. It's important that you do all that, even if you don't think that this particular job warrants that we're becoming systematic. And when you are used to setting your drop cloth down, you know, at the base of the, the lavatory before you start working on it, it just shows as the customer's walking through and kind of checking on what you're doing when you have a drop cloth laid out and a tool mat laid out on their countertops, that that shows that you're respecting their property. You may not want to do it, but it's it's something that needs to be done. It can really set you apart from another company that that doesn't take the time and and has the have the respect for their for their property. So that's just another way to add value to what you're doing. And so when you start the job, you have that laid out. If for any reason you have to go out to the truck or if if you have to go to the supply house, it's important to inform the customer of that because especially if you're going to head out to the supply house, it's important to tell Ms. Jones, hey, Ms. Jones, I had a, uh, I need to go get a part that I don't have on the truck. I'm just going to run up to the store and I should be back, you know, in 25 to 30 minutes. Just wanted to let you know. Because if they don't know and you just leave and you don't tell them when you're going to be back, that puts them in an even more uncomfortable situation than they're already in. And, and your goal as a technician is to make them as comfortable as possible because they're already in an uncomfortable situation. So it's important to, to, to communicate with the customer. And also, if you run into something that, that was unforeseen, it's okay to tell the customer that and always remain confident. Uh, but if you if you told the customer that the job usually takes anywhere between X amount of time and and this amount of time, and you start going over that, it's okay to inform the customer, hey, I'm I'm running into some things that I didn't expect, but no no worries, I'll be able to 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 get it knocked out. I just want to let you know. And the customer appreciates that, and they're not wondering, oh man, I wonder if he's if he's really in a bind here is he said it would take two hours and now he's been here three and a half. I, it's, it's just important to, to be mindful of that. Um, and when you get done with the job, it's important to let the customer know, Hey, Ms. Jones, I'm, I'm just finishing up. I'm going to start loading my tools up and clean up my area. If you want to come take a look at what I've done, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll show you what I've done. And that, that helps the customer uh, with the process. It, it lets them know, okay, this is just about over with, and um, they can start expecting to 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 make payment, and and they know that you're about to leave. So, um, so once you've once you've loaded up, you've tested everything, you've cleaned up your area. It's time, and it's and it's a really important thing to collect payment while you're on site and your CSR should have already informed the customer that we accept, um, we payment is due upon completion and we accept all major credit cards, checks or cash, however you want to pay, but payment is due upon completion. And it's, it's important for you as a technician to collect that payment while you're on site because the repair is still fresh. The, the fact that you got them out of a, a problem situation, you fixed your their problem. That's one aspect of it. But just have just the the extra time that is involved 
in the office having to run somebody down for a for a for a payment is just unnecessary. I know some technicians don't like to talk about collecting payment. They don't like to to broach the the money aspect of it, but it it is really important as a technician for you to collect payment before you leave. It just it, it just avoids all kind of uh, unnecessary time and problems. Uh, and the customer expects it anyway. I think that it, most residential service experiences end with collecting payment. It's 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 no more. We'll bill you. That that's just something from the past, and it's it's perfectly acceptable and necessary <clears throat> to collect payment upon completion. And and also too, you want to make sure that you show the customer that you're appreciative of the job. I mean, there are a lot of plumbing companies out there that, um, at least in our area, there are a lot of plumbing companies and the customer didn't have to choose your company, but they did. So it's important to be sincere when you're thanking them for, for allowing you to do work. And, and also make sure that you ask them for a review uh, this is this is automated with us because we have service titan and it's set up to send an automated text with a with a link to our google reviews so so that part is is making it easy for the customer to give you a review that that's the main thing asking for a review and asking them to call you by name that's important because you know you want to be you want to be recognized for the for the experience that you gave the customer but you have to make it easy. And that's that on the office end of things, it has to be made easy for the customer to give a review. Uh, even the best of service I've had in the past from different types of, of, of services, if they ask me for a review, I'll have the best intentions of giving them a, a wonderful review. But if it's if it's too many steps that I have to take to get to where to give them the review, I'm just not going to do it. You know, the service is over with, they did do great, but if I have to log on or if I have to, you know, respond to an email and go, go through a bunch of steps, I'm just not going to do it. So make sure your process and your system that you got set up is no more than just a couple of clicks. And really you don't even need a long review. You just need that five-star rating. And that's really simple to set up. Uh, like I said, we have our set up through service Titan and, it's it couldn't be easier. It's it's automated. It happens every time. And if we just just kind of a little a little word on that, if we do get into a situation where the customer and 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 us don't see eye to eye, and they don't, we didn't provide the the best experience for them, or they just don't, they didn't have, they didn't appreciate us we call the office and tell the office to turn off the job and marketing notifications. So it doesn't send them that, that review, that uh, link for a review. But other than that, you know, you're thanking the customer, you're, you're thankful that they allowed you to come do the work. And when you pull out of the driveway, you're on to the next one. So when you create a system that you do these particular steps in every situation, that's going to make you more successful. That's going to help you get to a point where you expect the same things every time. And the customers will, will be more comfortable with you because you feel you, you sound like you're confident and you've done this before. And it's not just about fixing the plumbing problem, I guess is the main theme for, for this conversation. It's not just that you know how to fix a plumbing problem. It's that you know how to make the customer feel comfortable with you being in the house, confident that you know what you're talking about and the fact that they like you be courteous and smile and be thankful that they let you do a job for them. And that'll make for a better service call. And that's how we do it at the MDP um, success Academy. So if you need, if you need any other help with, with that kind of thing, make sure you like, and subscribe and, and comment I love talking about this stuff and it was good to spend time with you solo. I'll be glad when Matt comes back uh, from his vacation and we can, we can talk about some more stuff, but until then we'll see you next time. All right. Well, that does it for this episode of coach's corner. Make sure to like, and subscribe below and make sure you join us on our next episode to continue to learn how to stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Thanks for stopping by.